Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good day, depending on whenever you're watching this. Um, let me crank my truck up a little bit. Well, yeah, let me crank it up just so it can heat up and get this ice off. Um, I'm supposed to get started at 8 o'clock, uh, and I'm still... I'm still in Charlotte, and it snowed, it snowed pretty heavy last night. Let me see if I can get out here and show you. Woo. Snow was pretty heavy last night. So, um, so what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do, is uh first walk up and see if they're letting anybody out uh because they usually don't because we're sitting on a hill in a valley uh, i think that's the case I, I think that's because i think that's why they do this that we're sitting on the hill um they usually don't let people out if it's this bad but the night before um so i'm gonna go check that let my my truck uh, heat up a little bit um uh, tidy up a little bit I guess this is a good time to kind of show you, you know, a little bit of what I got. I got the cooler. It's, uh, um, it says on the front, right? <laughs> uh, good for four days, up to four days. So, and if anybody's wondering what that beeping sound is, it's a brake air supply low. You know, it just got to build up pressure there. And once it, once the secondary pressure gauge builds up, there to go off <clears throat> um but yeah so i got the cooler i'm just gonna fill that up with ice strapping it into the seat belt so it stays there comfortably uh, while i am maneuvering my truck my trailer um uh, i put all my clothes up there i didn't get enough time to put those away but i did get food was the focus guys food was the focus guys and ladies um so I wasn't able to get a fridge. Let me see. So I do got a lot of food in there. Um, chips, uh, cookies, bread. I got a lot in here. Let me open this up here. So I got a lot in there. Um, chips, not chips, but uh, some Lunchables in there. Uh, lunch meat. Uh, I did end up getting this grill as well. Little George Foreman, only because the the inverter that I have under the bed, you know, it's a low voltage or uh, relatively low watt. I mean, I could put a TV to it, but that's because it's, TV don't use that much actually watts. But uh, a fridge, I'm just a little bit nervous about putting a fridge in there and it not and like it kicking it off or something. So that's fine. I did get a little plug that runs to the inverter. Plug my phone up for entertainment. Uh, watch some YouTube videos at night. Um, but yeah, uh, I haven't done too much to it. This way, oh, I did get some rugs. Um, I don't really like dirt back here. So I, I got a little broom to uh, get it swept out, you know. And yeah, I don't really like dirt back here. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where, that's what I'm doing now. So I'm just gonna let the truck heat up. Let me go inside, check this out, check out the situation. And yeah, I'll be back with you all. All right, guys, update. It is still about eight o'clock. Just went up to the front, uh, front desk um, of driver services. And they are not letting drivers out this morning, right now at least. Um, because the roads, it is 20 something freaking degrees and my hands are doggone frostbite out here. Um, uh, but yeah, because of, because of, uh, because the roads are too slick. And so what I'm gonna do is use this time to um, trip plan. It's only a short trip, but I'm gonna look because eventually they will let us out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is trip plan. I'm gonna check my truck lift the hood up go ahead and get that out of the way 
and then I'll do some trip planning, check back in within a few minutes just to get an idea of when they're gonna let us out. For you guys that, um, I was a little confused on what an APU looked like. So, I'm gonna show you, well, let me show you what an APU looks like and then I'll show you what it looks like when you don't have one, when you're like me. So that sound you're hearing is not the truck. It's the APU running, good for them. That black box, the black box is the APU. black box is the APU <laughs> that's running there and when you don't have one and you're like me you do get a heater under the bed but so it looks like when you don't have any so yeah that's the condition I'm in but you do get I do got a heater under the bed that did pretty well last night I checked it out for the first time it did pretty well um uh but yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. Clear off this uh, engine. It's my truck. Clear it off and check under the hood. Do some trip planning, check back inside, see when I can go. The sun is coming out. Somewhere. There it is. It's coming out, so hopefully it can melt some of it, but it's still like 20 some degrees, so. Uh, might be some time before we can go last time which was last sunday um it stayed closed until like 11 o'clock so probably be the same here but uh good thing it's just a short load tonight or today um but yeah the first thing i did uh when i did get out of the truck was that sign right there let me see if i can show it to you guys right there says air tanks must be drained daily if you walk go and watch my pre-trip videos it'll show you but the air tank uh valves are inside that contain uh, inside that compartment there just go ahead and pull them so it'll drain the, the air moisture that is built up throughout the day and it don't freeze if you let that freeze then you're gonna at some point end up with no air pressure and that's when things really get bad so make sure that you uh make sure that doesn't happen all right <laughs> um but i'll check back with you all later um let you know what's going on okay all right so i told you i was pre-tripping so i guess while i'm sitting here um better time as any to just show you you know what i'm doing what i'm looking at um doing pre-trip so i'm gonna i'm gonna go look at my load or my pre-assignment it's in pre-assignment right now i'm gonna go look at it and see what i got see what i have to do today all right so it's a two-stop load um it looks like i'm going from tractor supply to tractor supply store uh there so it's 14 miles to the tractor supply and then uh, another 66 mile to the store. So what I'm doing here is I've already been to that first track of supply. I know what that looks like. I know what that looks like. I'm now going to go look at the, the, the store because I haven't been there and see what that looks like. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, you want to be prepared for what you're going to have to do uh, there. Well, let me go ahead and... Let me do this here. Let me click on here. Let me look at some of the details here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. What kind is it? It is drop customer live unload. So live unload, go a little bit here. Uh, live unload means pretty much that I'm going to have to back it up and they're going to unload it while I'm just sitting there. Then I'll have an empty trailer um to take back any special let's see no other remarks so it's a live on load right so now let me switch it over to i'm gonna use this phone i got the address um here so it's at 
Let's see, pre assignments here. Do -do -do -do. It's at uh, Plaza Parkway, Plaza Parkway, Lexington, Kentucky. Okay, so I'll go over here. I've already got an input there. Um, so I have to track the supply here. So before, sorry, before I do that, let me go up here to these little, uh, that little thing that looks like a, a graduation hat. And I'm going to click satellite because I want to see what it looks like. Um, see a little bit closer of what it looks like. Let me, give me one second. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me pinch it in here. Uh, see what it looks like. Let me pinch it in. Come on, thing. There we go. Okay. And it's just okay. Okay. So this is what it looks like. This is the tractor supply store. Uh, you can see it's connected to a Ollie's, Planet Fitness, whatnot. You can also see a truck. That's right there. So that's telling me that's probably a one way. Maybe it's a little room there. So maybe it's not a one way, but I follow that road all the way just to see, you know, where I can come out or come into. And it looks like I'm coming in and off of uh, Plaza Parkway because if I follow the road back where he came from, let's see, follow the road back here. He's going through a parking lot and he comes also off of Plaza Parkway. Okay, so I can come in. It looks like I can come in either way, but let me focus on this tractor supply. So, come on, thing. All right, so I tractor supply. That right there seems to be the dock that I have to back into. I'm not really sure. I'm I'm fairly confident that's the dock. That little white block sticking out. Now. What I'm going to have to do, because it looks like it's going to be almost a 90 degree, maybe a 45, um, a 45 there that I could use to back it in there. Um, but I don't have much room because as you can see here, it looks like that that is kind of like wooded area a little bit. It goes off the pavement and I don't want to get stuck. So what I would do is possibly pull in. I would try to come in through this direction come in through that way here so I can come in um, and actually see it on my left side. Otherwise, it'll be a blind side and I don't want to do that. Um, what I'm thinking is they did the same thing. And what I mean when the blind, I'm sorry. What I mean on the blind side is when you come in this way, when you come in from left to right, um, and you have to back in there, that means you're going to have to pull up and then back towards your left. You can't see anything on your left side. Uh, you only have your right side, which kind of means nothing. I mean, you, you, yeah, you, you possibly won't. And, and then you got to lean forward and not any hit anything on your right side because the mirror, you know, you can adjust the mirror, but you'll keep having to do it. Whereas if you come in from right to left and then do a 90 or 45, you can see everything on your left perfectly by just you know looking out your window um and looking back so i'm gonna make it easier on myself i now know i just have to come in um on plaza parkway then i'm gonna just come in on the right side go up if it's not a one way it don't look like a one way because that truck has space on his uh left side so that's what i'm gonna do then i'm gonna pull up to a 45 pull up turn turn um so you put okay so the way you do a 45 right so i would pull up from the right to left going this way sorry pull up from right to left and then uh what i would do is i would as soon as my shoulder hits that that uh low dock i would immediately turn my wheel right and head to the 12 o'clock position until i get straight like until my tractor gets straight to the 12 o'clock and then i would uh once it gets straight to the 12 o'clock i immediately turn my my wheel to the left until i get to the nine o'clock until i get straight to the nine o'clock that should put you at a position should put you at a now it's not your um it's not my shoulder i'm sorry 
as soon as my drive tires get into that um that uh that dock that's when i would turn to the 12 o'clock position until i'm straight once i'm straight once my tractor is straight at the 12 o'clock position i would then turn to the left to my nine o'clock position once it's straight at the nine o'clock position you should be in a good position to do a 45 degree back um there and if i'm more comfortable which i mean there's it should be space there it should be space there i can it should be space there. Um, I could possibly do a 90, but a 45 might work a little bit better and get me set up. Um, I'll see, because a 45, a 45 actually uses more space than a 90. So I might have to end up doing a 90. And on a 90, I would pull the tractor and the trailer all the way forward, maybe a lane over, maybe a little bit over a lane, um, over past the door, um, and then I would uh, immediately turn my wheel to the right, turn my wheel to the right and pivot the trailer into that dock. Um, and, you know, I would just have to walk it in there, get out and look, go, use go, get out and look. Um, and unless somebody is there to help me, which I doubt it. Um, so I'd get out and look a few times until I, you know, get it back. And uh, but I'll, I'll try to document it as much as possible. But I just wanted to let you guys know what I'm looking at, what I'm doing, um, what I'm preparing for while I'm sitting here. All right, I'm rushing to my well, I'm not rushing to my truck, kind of am. But they just it's about 9 30, they just gave the go, open the gates, outbound trucks. So I'm trying to get to my truck so I can get on this road. The roads are a little wet, and these times take it slow. Let's pay close attention, looking at the bridges. Let's pay close attention to the roads, um, icy surfaces. I've already done my pre-trip on my truck, and uh, I'm ready to get it going. I'll update you guys. guys i've already did the duty um here i got it it's, this is what I call a floating a floating dock here and it's a little ramp you back into but it's not an easy dock by any means i actually came in from that direction here not what i said i was going to do but the gps kind of went wonky on me so i had to turn around up there let me see if i can show it yeah, let me get around here but you can actually see this ditch that i narrowly evaded here that's quite a nasty ditch that would have got me in some some trouble <sighs> okay but up there not here because i tried to turn around here it's not enough space i had to turn around up there in that hole our docking thing and uh came up and as soon as my drive tires got to this, I um, turned to the left and then turned it back to the right to get it in there diagonally. Just looked out the window, backed it in there. And uh, I did have a guy here standing and he uh, helped me with the um, judging the time because it doesn't have any, any bumper brace or anything or somebody tore it off. So, but yeah so i'm in there he even said it's not an easy dock by any means and you can see where people have dug that ditch out right there getting it in there but i missed it so i'm gonna give myself a pat on the back because <laughs> that it was not easy Yo, I know, I know, I know. I keep showing y'all the aftermath and not the real content. But don't worry, I'm going to change that uh, coming up soon. I just got to get the right equipment. But I just wanted to show y'all another backing here. I'm dropping off this load. Uh, 
there and I came in from that way. You can see the amount of space I got. And not to mention the ice as well. So pretty much I only had this space here to avoid the ice. But man, I'm, I'm <laughs> another pat on my back. That was, that's good. That is good right there. And it took like 20, 25 minutes, you know? But I kept getting out of the look. I got out of the look like four times to make sure I wasn't gonna hit that trailer. And thank goodness, you know, I just found the spot <laughs> with no other trailer on the side. So that helped me out a little bit. So I didn't have that space available. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting used to it, but I gotta get out of here. I'm going to PA tonight. And I'm trying to get a, a get at least 100 miles under my belt tonight before I suck it in at a rest area. Um, talk to you guys later. What's up guys and ladies, ladies. Um, what's up? <laughs> uh, so today has been a very busy day. I showed you I dropped off that first load and that was all good. Uh, I had I told you I had to go to Pennsylvania, so that's where I'm on I'm on to now. Um, I I was just getting a little bit tired, a little sleepy, and I decided to just pull into a um a a, a, a petrol that I actually know because I actually went to this petrol on uh, Interstate 81 um, every, uh, every other day, really, or every day when I was with my, my training engineer for those two weeks. Uh, sorry about the lighting, but you know, this is just the cat. So um, yeah, I was just getting real tired. You're the captain of your ship and please take that seriously. Like if you're fatigued, um, just stop. Uh, I had about three hours left of my 11 hours driving. So I could have drove a little bit, but I was just tired. Um, and I pulled over and I just parked, you know, in the very back. It's a petrol, it's pretty big. Something quite funny is like, <laughs> I know, like I just pulled up and parked on the edge, the first spot that um, I could find. No one, I, I saw trucks like going around and around and around like looking for a, a spot in between other trucks because no one wants to park on the edge. Reason being is that, uh, you know, you're more than likely to get hit and it'll be a hit and run. Like they don't stay and say, oh my God, here's my insurance card or something like that. Nah, they just hit and run. So nobody, it was cool, pretty funny. Like you just see tens of trucks just swirling in the parking lot trying to find a, um, uh, a spot in between choice when there was just empty spots there i i know like it's foolish but i'm just i'm just so tired i don't have to I, like i'm just really really tired right now but i did want to go through my day with you all um before i got here before i got on i-81 i was on this road and comment below if you've ever been on it so i thought i heard Give me one second. Give me one second. I thought. I thought. <laughs> I thought I heard some knocking. It's like, what the heck? I don't want no lot lizard in here. Be held up at, you know, weapon point, whatever it may be. Um, but uh, before I got on I-81 uh, and comment below if you've been on it I was on this road called the Interstate 73 Corridor and I got on it in near, near Mockville, North Carolina and I took it all the way up to Roanoke if you've ever been on that road please comment below because I want to know if if I'm the only one that thinks what I'm, a, you know, thinks the way that I'm about to explain to you all how it is. So I get on the road and you know how they, they, there'll be these signs on the side of the road that says, you know, tell you what interstate you're on. It just have the interstate number and it just say interstate number. It'd be a blue sign, a blue or red sign. 
Well, this one was a blue and red sign. It said Interstate 73. And I was kind of glad because I was already at the point where I was looking for a rest stop to just, a uh, rest area to just pull over. And I was like, okay, well, there's an interstate, so there's got to be some rest area somewhere. But when I seen this sign above it, it said Future Interstate 73. I was like, Future Interstate 73? Well, are you an interstate or are you not an interstate? Because on my GPS, which that's a, it's, a, it's another long story, but F that GPS, uh, on my GPS, it was saying Interstate 73. Now, this should have rang some bells already. I should have been on defense mode already, right? So I'm going down the road. It's, it's going from 55 miles an hour to 45 miles an hour on, on a future interstate, mind you. Uh, it doesn't hit anything above 55. And it's mostly for, it's mostly 45. It dipped into 35 a couple times. I don't know how it's going to become an interstate because of three reasons. Reason number one, you're going directly in towns. Like directly in towns. You're you're like there's the there's the inter, the, the future interstate, and then there's a freaking gas station coming off of it. And Reason two, I have never been so nervous in all my years. <laughs> the the inner the this I seventy three this future I seventy three has so many hills, and at every and at the bottom of every one of those hills is some of the sharpest turns that you can literally drift through. Like if you were in a car, just, you would have to drift it. Like it's, they're so sharp. And I only seen one hazardous rollover sign. The whole interstate is a, is a rollover hazard. It, it was, I was just, I was, I, 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 trucks is passing me. I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't know how, and I would watch them uh, just to see if their brakes was coming on, like their brake lights was coming on. Some of them did, some of them miraculous, miraculously, it was like uh, somebody walking the tightrope around these turns. It was just so sharp. It was hills, 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 hills. And it felt like I was on there for like 200 miles. I know I was on there for maybe like, maybe like 70 to 80 miles, however, long it is from Mox, 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 I think it's Moxville or Mox, I think it's Moxville, North Carolina. I might be wrong. I know it has Mox in it because I thought that was hilarious because Mox, right? Um, wherever it is, however amount of distance it is from Moxville, North Carolina to Roanoke, that's how long I was on that road. But reason number two, I haven't forgot three reasons. First reason was it's going through towns. Oh, the second reason was the hills. Reason number three, you can't have an interstate and go get directly into your driveway from the interstate. There was in, there was <laughs> there was driveways attached to the interstate. The reason why it was 45 miles per hour on some places and 35 is because there was driveway. Literally, people were pulling out. Like it would be a sharp, it would be a, a, a steep grade, a sharp turn. And at, after that turn, there's driveways where people are just pulling out, like just randomly, just pulling out in front of you, pulling out behind you, turning every, everybody could not see. It's pitch black and everybody decided to turn their high beams on. No matter if the person across the, the way coming the opposite direction had theirs on, oh, I'm gonna outdo them, said the person behind me, every single person. I'm going to outshine their high beams. <laughs> I was being blinded from the, from the back, set up from the front, and I got cars coming from the sides out of their driveways. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just, I just wanted to, to let you all know 
try to avoid I-73 at any ways possible. You can take 77. You can take 77 to get on 81, 81 to take 66. If you're going up north, you can do that. You can take 85. Uh, and, and yeah, you can take 85. Just take that as well. Anything you can do to avoid I the future I-73, you should do that. Uh, but on another note, I don't want to dwell too long on that. I just, I don't want to dwell too much longer on that. I was on it for long enough driving. Uh, I met the person that had this truck before me. He had a, a 2022 now. And I asked, well, how did you get a 2022? Because he had it directly before me. Literally, he had it weeks ago, right? Uh, he said, well, you know, I heard some grounding, grinding sounds under the hood. And it was uh, continuous, continuously doing that. And I reported it. And they gave me a 2022. He said that he had that truck for, he had this truck for three years. And from what I've been told, the rumor is I stick with this truck long enough, but, but because it's like over 500,000 miles on it, it's an older truck, technically, um, I would be one of the first to get one of the new trucks when they become available. I do know that there's not a lot of trucks available I do know that. I don't know if it's because of the chip shortage or I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's but it's not a lot of uh trucks available. Like Schneider doesn't have access to a lot of. Them. But um hopefully that's the case where I will be putting a newer truck sooner rather than later cuz I trained for 2 weeks on a 2021 I believe Freightliner and those things are man, I would tr I trusted that thing. Heart and soul trusted it. And uh, it, it was just all the, the, the gizmos and gadgets and things they can do. Like um, they can release your fifth wheel from, you can release your fifth wheel from the cab. You don't have to, you know, uh, outstretch your arm under the, the, the trailer to do that. Just some minor things, but they're conveniences, right? So uh, I would love that truck and a truck with an APU in it. I mean, I've been talking with some people in the comments. I know it sucks. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I know it sucks. I'm dealing with it. I got my cooler here. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all my cooler. Look at there. Strapped in. I had to because this truck shakes. So I don't even have to hit a bump and that thing can come off. Come out of the seat. So I had to strap it in there. But uh yes, I'm doing good. I mean I got food. I got this bed is actually pretty comfortable and I look forward to it every night. It's, it's comfortable. I mean, it's just my uh, my aunt bought me some some uh, like she. I, I guess it was a Christmas present. She gave me some quilts, uh, and the perfect timing. I use one of the spreads as a like a sheet, and I'm using other spreads and quilts, uh, you know, for their for their purpose, and uh, it's a very comfortable bed. So I'm I'm always excited to go to sleep <laughs> at night. And what makes it really good is that the days go by really quickly. Um, they just go by really quickly, which is good. I'm going to be out for 25 days. That's 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 my um, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be out for 25 days. I get a few days off, like five or six, and then I do that. That's what I'm going to be doing. But yeah, uh, I mean today was a great day overall. I did. Oh, I did get back into the groove let me tell you what i mean by that when i was with my te that was that last week especially i was in my groove i was in my thing back and came natural driving like you know i had my seat adjusted where i didn't barely have to move my hands like my stern wheel was right where it was supposed to be and when i got on i-40 i was on i-40 for a second today out of moxville for a second before I got to that future must not be named interstate. Um, I was on I-40 and I realized like, I'm back in my groove. I'm back in my groove. I was for for a while there uh, yesterday and most a lot of this morning, I was eking around the, um, the, the, the road. I was just nervous for some reason. It's like, I, I hadn't felt that 
since I first got into the truck with my TE. And I was just nervous. And then, I, I don't know, I was just just driving and I was like, yeah, this is, this, is, this is what I've been missing. I don't know what it was, what clicked, but something did and I'm back in my groove, people. So I just wanted to let y'all know that. But with, uh, with all that being said, I will catch you guys up tomorrow on everything uh, that happens tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, I apologize ahead of time if this video is late because I, you know, I've got to deal with my uh, my Wi-Fi here, hotspot, uh, to upload this video. And I, it's already going to be a big one. So apologize if it's late. You, you know, it's not meant to be. Have a good night, good day, good morning, or whenever you're watching this. Talk to you next time.